Maybe I'm gonna attempt to put this onto here. Practically installs itself. Normally I, I'm a believer in using the least amount of uh, aftermarket patch panel as possible. But in this case, this was punched in pretty good here. All through here, I pulled it out to relieve the stress on the uh, pillar and everything. But it's still just super rough. As you can see, it's all pretty uh, bashed in there still. And uh, I don't feel like dealing with that. So I'm just gonna change the whole thing. These louvers need a bit of cleanup work to look presentable, but uh, less work than trying to straighten out this nightmare. So just take a moment to appreciate the precision uh, finishing work on the, the lead seam here. Imagine trying to get away with that on uh, in a modern body shop today. Just a hole here and just kind of a glob of something here and whatever, good enough. As I've said in some of my older videos where we've worked on these trucks, absolutely do not change the whole panel unless it's the last resort. Way easier to section it in down here. In this case, the louvers were mangled, there's a bunch of damage, and I didn't feel like uh, spending a day on that when I could just change out more of the panel, save a bunch of time. Uh, because I need all the time I can get. If you're new here, this cab is a 53 and we're converting it to a earlier style cab and we're converting it into a five window cab. And this cab is also extremely rusty and dented and banged up. So there's a extreme amount of work to do here. Not to mention it still has to go on the truck, which is another massive amount of work. And So that uh, definitely could have gone a lot worse, but uh, you can see there's still a certain amount of uh, collateral damage here that you're getting. Oh, this is 
wowed out so we gotta straighten all that out but you can see why you probably don't want to don't want to get involved with this if you don't have to because now I'm gonna have to re-weld it all through here and uh, that's just uh, you know and then try and make it look nice again um, so not uh, not ideal but uh, we'll get through it now if you if you absolutely do have to change the whole panel then uh, the key to this is just patience and you saw me using that seam splitter get yourself a set of those don't use a chisel seam splitter works so much better for this and uh, just take your time and be patient the uh, more of a rush you get in the more of a mess you'll make and the more you'll have to spend trying to make this look nice again so don't uh, just take your time and you can get through it all right it, uh, it's better to take your time in this step than rush through this get it apart fast and then have to come back here and try to like straighten out something that's absolutely twisted because you know the more you bend and twist the more you're twisting this and all of this and you're just moving stuff around and then you're gonna have issues with uh, your hood fitting and all that stuff now you'll probably notice that I melted the lead out of this uh, upper area here and the new panel comes with this indent here which is just like the factory and when I cut all of the uh, the rest of this off you'll see that I cut that this piece out and so this would the upper cowl overlaps on top of this this fits underneath and then the factory there's an indent and the factory just filled out with lead and it wasn't because they were trying to be like super craftsman or anything it was just it was faster to build all these panels separately then spot weld them together and then lead over the seams rather than try to you know they're not going to sit on the factory and butt weld and uh, pick and file and whatever all these seams so that's just the way they did it back then back then it was starting in the 1930s and going all the way up through the well into the 70s and early mid late 80s it was kind of desirable to have a car body that looked like it was all one piece and not just a bunch of individual pieces together they still build cars the same way in multiple pieces but now they just it's i guess faster and cheaper for them just to put a cheesy looking molding over all the weld seams rather than have somebody on the production line hand finishing out all those seams even on trucks back then i guess uh you know it was kind of desirable to have them all look like they were one piece one piece and not just a bunch of crap welded together these cabs they look like they're all one piece but it's actually you know we got this panel one and then we got the upper panel and then we got the windshield post is, is another piece and then the roof is another piece and the back panel is another piece so it's all just multiple pieces welded together and then they leaded everything in and it all kind of looks like one cohesive shape same thing they did on all the cars back then but uh something that's kind of gone away in manufacturing now they just like i said just put cheesy looking moldings over everything and uh call it a day and people seem to be buying them so obviously uh whatever they're doing seems to work good for them anyways uh, i got sidetracked again my point was anytime i encounter these factory lead seams and i have to uh, dig into them i eliminate them because there's no reason for them anymore and having a big trough filled with lead or fiberglass or bondo or whatever you want to fill it with is not uh, really considered good practice a factory just did it to speed up production but uh, I don't I'm not comfortable with having a big trough filled with whatever and if we were to go back and lead this or fill this or anything we would have to re-weld the entire thing this was never fully welded from factory it was just partially spot welded and then they just let it right over the seam they never fully welded anything so if we're going back and doing that then you want to have a fully welded seam you don't want something that's open to get moisture in if you're letting it you don't want an open seam where the acid from the tinning process can creep under and cause rust because that will fail very quickly which obviously you don't want to eliminate this seam uh what i'm going to 
do is I'm going to make a cut here and here right along this edge and then I'm going to hammer this trough flat so that it will be flush And the last time I was working on one of these trucks, I replaced these inner to outer cowl panels. And I said the uh, aftermarket replacements were good quality. Uh, since that video, I've discovered there's two different manufacturers of these. The ones I bought are, are the good quality ones. And then there's another, I don't know who makes these, but uh, the other ones that are available, from what I've seen online, they fit like absolute garbage. So I thought I'd just show you the ones that I bought. Again, I don't know who makes these, but here's the part number for the driver's side. Here's the part number for the passenger side. And the way you can tell is the ones I buy, they have the holes pre-drilled for the fenders already. And on the inside, they look super rough and they look like garbage none of this is visible when it's all put together but they look pretty rough through here but uh the ones that uh don't fit they're all nice and smooth and they and these little dimples here for the beads on the inner cowl panel well they're kind of squared off on the uh, other ones that are available and it, it looks like it would be a better panel, but they're actually garbage. So uh, these ones are definitely a lot better. The only thing you really have to do with them is sometimes through here, there's uh, might be like a little chunk sticking out or whatever that you got to hammer flat. But uh, the other ones I've seen, you have to like cut and re-weld them and, and do a bunch of stuff to make them fit. Whereas these are basically a drop in uh, insulation. The other thing is the driver's side has these three holes for the uh, emergency brake assembly. The uh, other ones that are available that don't fit do not have these holes. So I just wanted to clear that up before we go any further. I had a lot of you uh, ask where I buy parts for these trucks and I'm in Canada so buying stuff from LMC and all those places uh, it costs a fortune to get up here. So I try to buy as many parts as possible from Scott's Super Trucks. They are located in Penhold, Alberta. They have parts for Chevy or GMC trucks from 1932 up to 1987. Here's their contact information. Uh, I've been uh, very good to deal with. Never had an issue with them and I've been buying parts from them since uh, we put my 66 GMC together, which was like 16 or 17 years ago now. And everyone I know who's dealt with them has always had positive experiences. So try to support the smaller businesses. I don't know them personally. I never talked to them besides ordering parts, uh, but 
they never done me wrong so i have no problem uh giving them a shout out here so if you're in canada you need parts for uh old chevy or gmc from 1932 up to 1987 uh, they have my recommendation So I got this thing mocked up on here now and at this stage it's really tempting to just weld it all on but do not under any circumstances do that. We have to fit the door before we do any welding. If you try welding this on now and then you put the door on later you will be very disappointed and you will have a lot of rework to do most likely unless you're extremely lucky. So anytime you're welding on anything near a movable panel, whether it's a hood, trunk lid, door, uh, spaceport, whatever it is, always mock it up, make sure you're happy with how it fits, and then weld it on. So it doesn't matter you're putting on a quarter panel or whatever, uh, always fit the doors before you lock it into place. So this is just clamped in. Uh, we have one sheet metal screw down here. I'm hoping I can loosen and tighten that once the door's on. I always forget where the best place is to put these on, a sheet metal screw in until after I've got the door on, on these, and then I end up having to take the door back off to get the sheet metal screw out. Anyways, the rest is just held on with clamps, and then up here, we're going to be doing a butt weld. You saw I just did a, I just overlapped it right now and put a few tacks in because I don't have a, a clamp that can uh, teleport through solid steel so I had to just put a few tacks just to hold this in place and then when I'm satisfied with everything I'll just slice through the bottom layer and then butt weld this in but uh, you can also see where uh, I'm an idiot and I didn't cut myself enough uh, material so I'll have to put a little little uh, triangle in there but uh, what do you expect for a guy with a grade 7 education also, uh, just uh, another shout out to this inner panel and uh, how well it fits. No issues at all there, it all fits uh, just as the factory would. And uh, even all of the holes that are pre-drilled line up with the outer cowl. So, uh, I mean, even if you took these panels off a pristine uh, original truck and welded them on, you're not gonna get much better than that. So, very... Uh, Definitely, these uh, inner to outer cowl panels are worth the money. As long as you buy the right one, as I said. Uh, the, uh, the other ones that are available, uh, from what I've seen, they uh, do not fit this well. So, just uh, first fit of the door here well, actually second fit because we did put it on in the last video but this is the first time with the cowl panel and it does open and close but we're you know fairly acceptable all through here but at the bottom it's definitely out you know that's not uh, very good Pretty common for these not to fit very good at the bottom, but it's not welded yet, so let's uh, start by just taking off all these clamps, and I'm just gonna kind of roll this, this bottom section ahead a little bit, which will compensate for some of that. The door also isn't in exactly the same spot as when uh, 
I fit it last time. Uh, the hinges on the post, I took them off and I believe it's sitting a little bit lower than it was before. But we're just going to start with uh, the worst thing and something that we can adjust without adjusting the door. Because no matter where the door is, that's still not, uh, not going to be quite right. So we'll start there. This is not a door fitting tutorial. This is, uh, if you didn't see the last video or any of these videos, all I'm trying to do with this truck is just, uh, we're setting it to 1948 standards, which were pretty low, but I want the door to open and close, function properly, and at least get the body lines to be on the same plane, as well as some sort of gap where it's not going to rub. And, you know, like I said, 1948 standards. If you want to see more in depth on actually getting doors to fit and stuff, uh, you can check out the Cold War Motors channel. Uh, Scott's doing a rover right now and he's actually making everything fit, the doors and everything fit to a high standard. That will be the guy to watch if you want to see how panels actually get fit to uh, a high standard. Whereas this is just 1948 standard, which were quite low. So not really, there's not really a whole lot you're going to get from uh, watching me butcher this. Now he's got this moved over a little bit, could still do some more. There is a sheet metal screw in here, which I don't know if that's uh, hindering us or helping us right now, because we could also loosen that off and try to fatten up the gap through here to kind of even everything out. You know, not a bad idea to have a wider gap than a smaller gap. Before I do that, I'm gonna loosen off the uh, hinges to the post and then bring this whole door up just a little bit which will take care of some of this and maybe fix some of this and a little of that and uh, we'll see where that takes us again we're not uh, going for total perfection here my days of uh, spending 60 hours fitting doors and carefully grinding and hand filing and rewelding and cutting and rewelding and you know making everything totally flush and perfect those days are over now I just fix junk and just nice thing about fixing junk is anything you do is usually better than what it was. And uh, that's uh, the gold standard around here these days. Well, I uh, fiddled around with this a little more and that's as far as I'm taking that. We're just going for Saskatchewan farm truck standards here. So that is going to be acceptable for what I'm trying to do. And if somebody wants to take it uh, further from here and make it totally perfect, the baseline is at least in place where they can work with it and it's not out by a mile. Now the problem is the gap here, well not really a problem because we're not do doing anything about it, but the, the situation is we have a fat gap here, fat gap at the bottom, tight through here. So the natural inclination would be to blame the aftermarket patch panel. However, this is actually an issue with this door. And this is something I've run into several times on these trucks. It's uh, not uh, really anything uncommon. This is just the way they were made. But when I put a straight edge on the door, hopefully the camera will pick that up, and we go towards the bottom, you can see that this edge on the door is not straight. It's straight up until about here, and then it drops off. You can see that rocking like that. So this edge here on the door, it's actually curved like that, and then it ha quite dramatically curves like that. I suppose you could argue that uh, the panel is wrong and the door is cracked because it's factory, but here's a look at the driver's door, and you can see that it's actually straight up and down all the way through 
when we put the straight edge on it. So obviously not the uh, aftermarket panel's fault. I know that's hard to believe, but sometimes uh, you gotta load this factory stuff and it's not uh, not always perfect. So if I, I was trying to make this absolutely perfect, which I'm not, uh, but the way I would fix this is I wouldn't cut this panel. I see it quite often where everybody just cuts these panels and sometimes you do have to, uh, you know, but it's important to figure out where the problem is before you start cutting. You also don't want to just start cutting stuff and trying to make it fit if the door itself doesn't fit the opening or if there's an issue somewhere else. So if you're trying to fake it and compensate for something that was done improperly or something that's twisted or out of alignment or whatever, uh, you're just going to create more problems. So you don't want to cut anything until your absolute last resort. A lot of people would say, well, just weld metal on here, weld metal on here. But back in the day when I was working on stuff where it had to have, you know, perfect consistent gaps and everything all absolutely seamless and flowing and all that stuff, uh, we would always want to try to go for a quarter inch gap on every panel. And reason for a quarter inch is by the time you get paint and bodywork and primer and all of that on there, your uh, quarter inch gap turns into a 3 16 inch gap. So if we were like all bodyworking this perfect and everything and doing all that, well, if you have a tight gap, you run into the issue where the paint's gonna wanna start rubbing and trying to reassemble it after paint, you're gonna have all kinds of issues. So. For those type of cars, we always went with, uh, tried to go for a quarter inch gap. So what I would do is I would mark with my straight edge on here what I need to cut off. And I would take my grinder and just grind this edge until the gap opened up. And then, now you can't just grind material off because this is a hemmed edge. So I would grind that off and then I would have to go back and re-weld the hole edge of the door back on and then I would grind that again and then fine tune it with a file and get it so it's all totally straight all the way through and what I, and an easy way instead of measuring everything or they make special tools and all this crap you can buy I would just take a quarter inch drill bit and then run it through the gap and that would tell me when I had that perfect quarter inch gap all the way through and then obviously I would file the edge so that it was straight and whatever. But uh, if we cut into here and then move this ahead to open this up, well then we're putting a weird shape into this panel and this panel is actually straight. So you want to kind of figure out like where the problem is and then fix that problem where it exists rather than putting a problem into a panel with that doesn't have an issue at all. So. That's uh, some door uh, or panel alignment theory, I guess, that uh, we aren't doing because I have no interest in doing that kind of work anymore. I like fixing junk because anything I do to this is automatically better than what it was. There's no, no judges picking apart anything. You don't have to worry about any of that garbage. It does look, you know, absolutely, it looks amazing when you do get all those gaps absolutely perfect. Everything's nice and flowing and seamless between the panels. And there's, you know, that consistent gap all the way through. It looks awesome. And, you know, you can have a car that fits really good, but when you go and take it just that extra little bit, it sure, uh, sure does look good. Right up until some idiot wants to go for a ride in your car and they get in and slam the door with all their might, bend the hinges, bend the latch, and bend the door post and everything else and then all your hard work is done so uh, that's one reason why we don't uh, bother trying to go to that level anymore is you know it doesn't matter what you do or how careful you are someone's going to screw it up on you and I don't know what the deal is with people slamming doors on old cars but uh, well people are stupid so finally ready to start welding this I put a couple tack welds at the bottom so that it's not going to shift around on me at all and I'm going to start by butt welding in this seam here and reason for that 
is it's a good idea to start with whatever seam has to be butt welded if you're splicing something in rather than starting with the plug welds and the reason for that is if I weld this in and then something goes horribly wrong or I decide I'm not happy with something um, it's a lot easier to just take a zip disc and cut through here and start over if I have to go through a MIG plug weld trying to get that apart cleanly just ain't gonna happen and uh, you're in for a real mess like there's no way to take apart something that's been plug welded with a MIG without just absolutely massacring it so we start here and that's kind of our safeguard and once we have this in and we were happy with everything then we'll move on to plug welding it all with the MIG and uh, if you get all that done and you're not happy with it well then you're uh, basically in a lot of trouble. Well, I got the uh, inner to outer cowl plug welded to the inner cowl. Say that five times fast. You can see there, maybe all the plug welds holding that on. So that's all secured. And this is, I would say, almost completely welded. That welded, that welded, all the front welded. Uh, got that welded in, plug welded in. I say almost welded because I still have to weld the plug welds in the door jam, but I can't access those right now with the door on. There is a couple welds in the top, a couple welds in the bottom that I could get, and a sheet metal screw in the middle. So the danger of complete structural collapse, at least on this side, has now become almost non-existent. Can't exactly say the same thing for the driver's side though. I still uh, highly recommend only sectioning in this panel. However, 
uh, replacing the whole thing wasn't the worst thing in the world. You know, it's, uh, I like to save as much of the original metal as I can where possible. So that's just what I like to do. But uh, as you can see, changing this whole thing wasn't a huge ordeal. Obviously more work than just sectioning it in. But we didn't have much choice because this is just, uh, you know, not worth the time, I don't think, for what we're trying to do. These louvers aren't quite uh, stamped as nice as the factory ones. I did go over with the file and grinder and just kind of clean up the edges. There's a bunch of slag on there. So I think they'll uh, pass inspection. You know, if anybody's looking at this thing close enough where they can pick out that these aren't the factory louvers, then they're probably standing too close to it. Anyways, the reason I'm not plug welding the door jam in this episode is because to do that, like I said, I have to take the door off and I still need the door on because I have to replace this cab corner and that's another situation where you have to have the door on. So in the interest of being efficient, if I take the door off to plug weld that, then I'm gonna have to immediately put it back on to do the cab corner. So next episode, we're gonna replace this cab corner and we're gonna finish up the metal work on the passenger side of this cab so uh stay tuned for that hey thanks for watching and i hope all you will come back for the exciting cab corner installation in the next episode on our 1948 gmc also just wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone who participated in our petty vandalism slash subscription drive uh since that took place we gained uh, nearly 150 subscribers so it's uh, all very exciting and welcome to all you new uh, subscribers and viewers and things. Now, uh, around the same time, uh, Scott over at the Cold War Motors channel also gave us yet another shout out. So, you know, that may have uh, helped out a little bit too. Hard to say. Cold War Motors is kind of on their own uh, subscription drive right now. Uh, he says he's trying to get to 60,000 uh, by the end of the year apparently. So he's already kind of helped us out quite a bit here. So if you don't mind, uh, just unsubscribe from my channel and head on over to Cold War Motors and uh, subscribe to him instead. And uh, we'll try and get him to that uh, 60,000 goal before uh, the end of the year. Also, uh, wanted to share some uh, heartwarming and uh, exciting news from my uh, personal life. As uh, most of you know, I've been uh, auditioning and trying out for the lead role in a big opera for, uh, well, several years now. And, uh, you know, I, every time I just get turned down or uh, put on as an extra or a uh, stunt double for one of the lead players. So, uh, but I haven't given up and uh, just got a phone call there and uh, turns out I got accepted for the lead role in uh, the next big opera that's coming to town. And uh, as luck would have it, it's a pretty big one. Probably heard of it before. It's Alfredo uh, Fettuccini's rendition of the classic titled, I Can't Believe It's Not Butter. So I'm going to be playing the, the lead part in that. So I'm just uh, ecstatic about that, as you can tell. So the big show is going to be taking place on uh, December 15th. And uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, where you can buy tickets. Uh, it would really mean a lot to me if uh, a few of you would uh, show up and uh, help support me. Uh, down at the uh, Opera House, we're all uh, pretty optimistic that uh, more than uh, three people are going to show up this time. And I'm hoping that uh, some of you will stop by as well. We're kind of hoping that this could be the start of a, a new career for me. So as you can uh, tell, uh, myself and uh, the cats are just uh, over the moon with this news. And uh, that's enough of that. Thanks again for watching. Thanks to all our patrons. And uh, we'll see you on the next one with our big uh, cat corner replacement episode.